Hello, and welcome to the In the Word podcast. This is the podcast that will help you to understand God's Word, build a stronger relationship with God, and develop habits that will help you love God and others better. And now, here's your host, Trevor Pope. What's going on, family? Welcome to another episode of In the Word Podcast. Family, I am excited that you guys have joined me on today. It is always an honor and a privilege to chop it up with you guys. I appreciate all of the downloads that I've been getting on the podcast, all of the feedback, all of the love. I am truly humbled by that and I am truly appreciative for all of it, guys. I love you guys and thank you for tuning in. I'm glad that you know, some of these topics are encouraging you guys, are sparking some conversations. I'm telling you, it is truly a blessing. Listen, if you haven't already, don't forget to go and rate us on iTunes and leave a review. That would most definitely help the podcast spread even more. I truly appreciate that, guys. Uh, anytime you guys feel like commenting on any of the platforms that you're listening on and that it allows you to, please do not hesitate to do that. Now, this week, I want to talk about something that I think comes up a lot, you know, not only in conversation, not only in hearing talks about it on television, but, you know, also it comes up within ourselves. This this is something that we, you know, something that I can say that is constantly probably on the minds of many of us, uh, you know, and something that we think about all the time. And that's dealing with purpose, you know, the purpose that we have here in this life. And this particular podcast was, you know, it was sparked by uh, Eat Up Mondays that I did this past Monday. And I just talked about how your life matters to somebody else, you know, and the purpose of your life, how it matters to somebody else. Sometimes, you know, we can look at where we are in life, the things we have and the things we don't have and and kind of forget that God placed us here for a purpose and that we all have a purpose. We was all created with a purpose. And this was one of the scriptures that I shared this past Monday. And I'm not going to get into the things that I talked about past Monday, but I want to dig into it actually a little deeper. But if you have not heard that last Eat Up Mondays, you can go on YouTube, type in Trevor Pope Eat Up Mondays. And the recent episode is number 52. Um, and you can listen to that message. But this description that I shared for that Eat Up Mondays was Jeremiah chapter one, verses four and five. And the scripture reads as follows. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, this is Jeremiah talking, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So we see here that, you know, God says to him, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So before you even was was in your mother's womb, I knew you. I already knew you. And it says, and before thou camest forth, Out of the womb, I sanctified thee. That word sanctified means set apart. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. So what God is saying to him is like, listen, first of all, I knew you before you were even in your mother's belly. But also before you even came forth out of the womb, I had a purpose and a plan for you. And, you know, that's the thing that sometimes, you know, just going through the course of life, we seem to forget that God created me for a purpose. And I think a lot of frustration that I see in, you know, many individuals lives, people that I'm, you know, close to, or people that I just may hear talk on the internet, or talk on television, or just maybe passing and hearing them talk in conversation, you know, a lot of the things that they're struggling about in life, I think has to do with them not really living out their purpose. You know, in their mind, sometimes it's the money. I just don't have enough money. Um, Sometimes I just don't have enough time. You know, it's all of these other different things that they think a lot of times is the reason why they don't have full joy in their life. But believe it or not, when you start to walk in your purpose, when you do the thing that God created you to do, a lot of times that will cause you you know, to have your joy fulfilled. Like you, you know, all of the other things will just be cherries on top. And we'll, we'll talk about that. But, you know, I wanted to talk about this topic because I think it is a very important one. And something that we need to understand and know is that 
when it comes to purpose, this is the thing to remember because this this seems to be where the mix up comes in or where the confusion comes in or where the struggle comes in sometimes is the thing we need to remember is that purpose isn't driven by money. You know, but sometimes depending on what it is, it can produce wealth. I'm not saying that the thing that God created you to do or has given you to do can't possibly bring forth some type of money or wealth. But we have to remember that your purpose should not be driven by that. If you find yourself doing something that you believe that you were created to do, but it is driven by the possibility of seeing a ton of money at the end of it, that may be something you should evaluate if it really is truly the purpose that you were supposed to be doing or that you are focusing too much on the money or on the outcome than you are on the purpose because most people that you study and you listen to, you know, when they talk about uh, the things that they have accomplished in life, especially those things that they were meant to do, pretty much 100% of them will tell you, this is something that I am doing that I would still be doing even if I had not made any money off of it. Even if nobody paid me for it, even if nobody donated to it or gave to it, this is something that I would be doing No matter what, because this was the thing that was burning down on the inside of me. This was the passion, you know, that I had on the inside of me because this was the thing that God wanted me to carry out here. And I think that's important because a lot of times, especially if you are in a financial uh, bind or you're not really doing financially well or, you know, doing the, uh, the way that you would like to do financially, sometimes that can get in the way and really mess up you going forward and doing, you know, what it is that God has created you to do or called you to do. And that's something that you have to be very, very careful of. And I know for me being a preacher and doing the ministry of the Lord, for me, that is an absolute thing that I have to keep in mind because I understand, and this is for me, you know what I mean? Some preachers may have a different outlook on it. And it's not that I don't think, you know, preachers should receive money. We see in the Bible where it talks about, you know, uh, the preacher being worthy of the double honor and being a blessing to God's servants. So I'm, I'm not against that, so to speak. But I think what happens is a lot of times in churches is that we try to manipulate how we're going to receive and what it is that God has for us. And I think that's a different thing. And that's why me coming into ministry when I started preaching and even now, you know, I, I, I really, I I hardly ever ask for donations or anything. I have links in the descriptions where people can donate if they would like, but all of those things I try not to focus on. Not that I feel like they're bad in themselves, but I know with ministry, there's a thin line between, you know, ministering God's word, doing the work of the Lord and dealing with money. Not that I'm scared of money, not that I'm against money or none of those types of things. But I think when you do ministry, you really have to allow God to lead you and really open the doors financially for you that he has for you. And that doesn't mean that, you know, if somebody wants to be a blessing to you, you know, you can't receive that. Or it doesn't mean that if you ask somebody to be a blessing for whatever reason that you're you're necessarily wrong. But that's a very thin line that I try to be prayerful and careful on how I deal with. And the way I looked at ministry coming in, whether it was, you know, preaching or whether it was when I was doing a lot of the music, like going out, doing concerts and things of that nature, a lot of times. What I, you know, what, you know, what I did was, you know, I I would talk to the individual and be like, listen, you know, however God lay it on your heart, you know, you know, be a blessing in that way. Because most, most times people know, you know, what being a blessing to you is or, or, or how they can be a blessing to you. A lot of times you don't have to necessarily put an amount on things and things of that nature. And the reason why I did that is one, I don't ever want what I'm doing for the Lord to be hindered as far as ministry wise. And then it turns into a conflict. Well, you know, oh, that's not enough money. So I can't come because, because guess what happens now? The people that may have needed me to minister to them in that particular place. Now they, they will miss out on what God has for them. Now, if the individual still has me come in and they're doing something behind the scenes and they're playing me somehow on the way that they should be being a blessing to me, that's going to be between them and God. But what I want to do is I want to make sure 
that I do all that I can to to do the work of the Lord and do it in a way that it does not hinder other people receiving. Once again, not against people giving, not against, you know, preachers getting some type of offering and salary, none of that type type of stuff. But one thing about ministry that I've learned, you know, that ministry should not be driven by money, because if you go into ministry thinking, well, once I start preaching or once I start pastoring, I'm going to have this, I'm going to have that because we see all these other individuals doing it. When you go into it with the mindset like that and then those doors don't open or those things don't happen in that way, then what you will find is you will find yourself, if you are not careful, manipulating the people, trying to form that lifestyle that you envisioned before you got into it. So with me, the way I deal with ministry, there's times once in a blue where people be a blessing. There's times that I went and preached and people gave me an offering and things of that nature. And that's fine. But what the way I deal with is I just try to look at that as a cherry on top. And what I mean by that is I'm going to go forward. I'm going to do what God called me to do. If he desires that I have some type of wealth or some type of, you know, a decent amount of money, that will just be a cherry on top for me. I just want to make sure I'm doing his work. Like as far as for me, I'm still working. I, I still work a regular job. So it's not like podcasting or the YouTubing I'm doing full time. But am I against that? Of course not. I would love to do that full time. I would love to make enough finance to just, you know, chop it up with you guys, even, you know, create more content, whether that's in the form of short films, maybe telling some some biblical stories in a modern, you know, context. Oh, man, I would love to do that. And I'm praying that that's something that God may have for me in the future. But what I am not going to do is I am not going to force it. So I just said all that to say that, remember, your purpose isn't driven by money. It should not be driven by money. But it sometimes, depending on what it is, it can produce wealth. And even sometimes if it does not produce wealth, sometimes people that see you doing what it is that you were supposed to do well and it has affected their lives, they will be a blessing to you. So I wanted that to stick with you. And that's why I stayed on that for a second, because a lot of times what I see is people that, you know, they have this gift in them, whatever that gift is, whether it's ministry, whether it's business, um, uh, regular business or whatever it is, sometimes they're looking at the money way before they even go forward and do what it is that they are supposed to be doing. But, you know, I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit on this podcast, you know, about some of the things that can stop us from fulfilling our purpose. And, you know, something I want to be clear on and that I want you guys to never forget, only you can stop your purpose. Let me say that again. Only you can stop your purpose. Satan or people cannot stop your purpose. If God gave it to you to do, he is the creator of you and that purpose. There's no other thing, other person, other entity, spiritually, naturally, that can stop you from fulfilling that purpose. So I want that to be clear before we get into this, because a lot of times you will hear people come with come up with all of these different reasons on why they are not going forward and whatever it is that they're supposed to do. But I'm letting you know that a hundred times out of a hundred, you are the reason you are not going forward. You have to figure it out because if God gave it to you, then there's a way to get that done. And one of the things that I wanted to first start out talking about where I think um, our purpose is you know, we don't go forward in it um, is because we lack to plan. You know, when it comes to planning, a lot of times I'll talk to people and they'll say, listen, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. But a lot of times they don't really have a plan written out. And then it doesn't mean that you have to have a plan written out for the next 20 years. You hear people say stuff like that and God bless them if, if they're able to do that. But you have to have some type of foundation, some type of starting point, and some points of, you know, written down on some things that you can get into to start that process. One of the greatest quotes that I've ever heard is, it's not that people plan to fail, but they fail to plan. Great quote. Let me say that again. It's not that people plan to fail, but they fail to plan. So I'm here to tell you, if you don't have some type of plan written out, if you don't have some type of to-do list written out, it's going to be very hard to start what it is that you're supposed to be doing and to stay on track. Because a lot of times that to-do list, those bullet points, that one, I'm going to do this, two, I'm going to do that, three, I'm going to do that. 
a lot of times that is what's going to keep you on track. Let's read a couple a uh, couple of scriptures. Proverbs 16 and three says, commit thy works unto the Lord. And thy thoughts shall be established. That word commit there means to entrust, to put the care of. So when you put the care of your works into the hands of the Lord, it says your thoughts, that word thoughts there means ideas or plans shall be established. Why is it saying that? Because when you are saying to God, listen, I know I have this work to do, but I want you to lead and guide me in this. Then how many know it's a, it's a fail proof plan. You know what I mean? Like, you know, um, it, you know, it's not going to fail because you're allowing God to drive that vehicle. You're just sitting in the passenger seat and every time he stops and say, get out and do this, you do that. And, you know, you go and do it and then you jump back in the vehicle and he start driving again. In other words, you know, you're not trying to take the wheel, even though it's your purpose, the thing that you're supposed to be doing. You understand that God gave this to me. So let me allow the one that knew me before I even knew myself let me allow him to lead me in this and to drive me on this. And then it's going to be established. Everything that was in me to do, it's going to work out. When you read Proverbs 16 and 9, it says a man's heart deviseth his way. A man's heart. And, you know, when it says deviseth, it comes up with schemes and plans. It plans his way. But the Lord directeth his steps. So this is confirmation of Proverbs 16 and 3 is that God needs to be directing our steps in whatever it is that we need to be doing. So, you know, the first thing before we start planning, we have to understand that, listen, I need to commit my works unto the Lord. And one of the most popular scriptures that you may have heard read in the past is Habakkuk 2 and 2. And I think it, I think it's a, a, a great scripture to read when it comes to thinking about planning. It says, and the Lord answer me, this is Habakkuk talking and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. So the Lord told him, listen, write the vision down, write the thing that I showed you down, make it plain. And, and the same thing has to, you know, happen when we are planning out our purpose to go forward in our purpose. We have to write that vision down, the thing that we saw, the thing that God showed us. We need to make it plain. Don't make it all crazy and, you know, don't don't try to be sophisticated with it, but make it plain. You know, here it says upon tables, but we know in this modern day age, upon paper, upon your devices, you know, it says that he may run that readeth it. So somebody should be able to look at what you've written down and be able to run by that. They should be able to look at what you've written down and know everything that it is that you plan on doing or that you're going to fulfill when it comes to your purpose. But this, believe it or not, is one of the things that people fail to do. You know, they fail, you know, to plan. They don't plan to fail, but they fail to plan. And I'm telling you, if you do not have some type of plan, some type of to-do list, one, two, three, some type of uh, thing to guide you, guess what? It's going to be easy to get off track. So the first thing about going forward in your purpose is you have to make sure you have some type of plan written down. Another scripture that further confirms that, Luke chapter 14, 28 through 30. It says, for which of you intending to build a tower? Now, mind you, uh, this is Jesus talking to them about taking up their cross and, and about following him. But I think it's so beautiful in the conversation that we're having dealing with planning. I think it just speaks to it so much because it, it can be applied to even what we're talking about. Think about what, what it says. Listen to what it says. For which of you intending to build a tower Sit if not down first and count if the cause, whether he have sufficient to finish it. It says, so which of you are going to build a tower? So he, he's basically saying, which of you are going to come up with this plan or come up with doing something and not sit down first and count up the cause, what it's going to take and to see if you have what it's going to take to finish it. Verse 29 says, less happily after he have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it. So now because you didn't really sit down and plan it all out, you started it, you laid the foundation, but now you're not able to finish it. All that behold it begin to mock him saying this man began to build and was not able 
to finish. And listen, let's be truthful. That is what happens a lot of times because we go forward and we don't really have a plan. We really did not count up the cost. We, you know, the thing that we kept telling people that we're going to do and we're going to make it happen. They see us start off a little bit and then they don't hear nothing about it. And guess what? We've all been here. There's somebody that has some type of joke about it and they may play it and act like, oh, I'm just messing around with you. But sometimes, unfortunately, some people really get a kick out of that because unfortunately, some people are not going forward on their own. So to see you not do it, you know, they get a kick out of it and they mock you like, ah, I thought you was going to do this. I thought you're going to do that. And sometimes it is not in a friendly way. Sometimes within their heart, they really are glad and you know, that you were not able to do it and they, and they mock you. And we're going to talk a little bit about that later on. Um, when it comes to dealing with, with people and your purpose, you know what I mean? So the first thing here really quickly, we talked about is planning that that's the first thing. If you don't, uh, uh, if you don't have a plan, you know what I'm saying? You will fail. If you don't have a plan, it will be very hard for you to go forward and what it is that you are meant to do. Once again, let's quote that quote before we move on. It's not that people plan to fail, but they fail to plan. So we all don't wake up in the morning and say, listen, you know, um, I'm, I, I'm just going to fail today. Today is just not going to be my day to do well. No, that's not the case. A lot of times the things that we needed to do that day, you know, we just didn't have it planned out. And think about how practical and how real this is. Just think about those of us that have things written down on the refrigerator, you know, like tomorrow I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Why do we do that? Because we want to stay on course and we want to make sure that we take care of the important things that we want to take care of. So many of us do this on just a small level every day, just on our everyday living. So why aren't we doing this on the things that are concerning our purpose? You know, it just doesn't make sense. We'll do it when it comes to the stuff we got to do at our job and this and that. But when it comes to the thing that God has created me to do, I don't have anything written down or any type of plans on how to start and things of that nature. That just doesn't make sense, guys. So yeah, so we touched on it. The first one that is a big one is planning. This next scripture that I want to read is going to deal with our second uh, hindrance when it comes to going forward in our purpose. But before I give you that second one, let me read a scripture to you. Luke chapter 14, we're going to be reading verses 15 to, uh, to 23. And 15 reads, and when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, this is Jesus talking, a certain man made a great supper and bade many and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, come for all things are now ready. So this young, this guy that is talking to Jesus says, man, blessed is, is it going to be for those that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God? So now Jesus gives him this parable pertaining to that particular situation. And he says in verse 17, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them, that were bidden come for all things are now ready. So basically he sends a servant out. He says, listen, the, the table is set. Everything is ready. You don't have to worry about anything. Everything is already set up for you. And for us that are walking in our purpose, this is like God saying to us, listen, the door is open. Everything is set up. All you got to do is come. All you got to do is come and go forward. Allow me to lead you. Verse 18. Listen to what it says. And they all with one consent, begin to make excuse. So even though the table was set, even though everything was ready, the door was open. Now they begin to make excuses. Remember I told you that nobody can stop your purpose, but you let's read on. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excuse. And another said, I have brought five yoke of oxen and I go to, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house being angry said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. 
And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. And yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Now we know that this scripture is dealing with the kingdom of God and dealing with when God puts the call out and men refuse the call, they make excuses. But one of the things that this taught me about when it comes to even our purpose, because this is the same exact thing we do. And guess what it is dealing with when we make excuses? It is dealing with procrastination. And that's the second thing that I want to deal with. That's what we we saw these men do. They made excuses. They procrastinated. And maybe in their minds, they thought, listen, you know, we'll come on the next time, but I got some stuff to do. But the thing that we notice in verse 17, like I said before, the table was set. He said, come, everything's ready. And sometimes that's what's going on in our lives when it comes to our purpose and going forward. It's not that it's not the time. It's not that, you know, uh, that it's not all there and, and ready to, to, to be walked out. But a lot of times we're just not willing to walk through that open door. The door is open. God is saying, listen, I've already set the path for you to go forward and what I what it is that I put in you. But a lot of times we come up with excuses of why we cannot do it. And it will cause us to procrastinate when we look in Verse 21, what did it say? So the servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house being angry said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the heart and the blind. What do we see here? God is replacing them. He's saying, listen, all right, don't worry about them. Go and get some other individuals that are willing to come. And what this reminds me of is Saul and David. If you remember, Saul could not do what he was purposed to do. There was always some reason why he couldn't get it done or why he was messing up or making all of the bad decisions. And what did God say to him? He said, listen, don't worry about it. I got somebody that is not only going to replace you talking about David. He says, not only is he going to replace you, but he's going to be better than you. And not only did God replace him with David, but he kept Saul alive to see his replacement, to see the one that not only would do what he was supposed to do, but also would do it better. And what does that teach us? That listen, God does not necessarily need us to fulfill our purpose for his will to be done. And it also shows us that you do not want to be replaced on the thing that you are called to do, the purpose that you have in this life. And think about this. You most certainly don't want to see your replacement. You most certainly don't want to make an excuse and not go forward in what God called you to do and then see God replace you with somebody else and then see them do the job better than you would have done. It's like, no, that, no, I want to do what it is that God has called me to do. But that's so powerful because we saw that happen with Saul and David. It's like, okay, you're not going to do right. You're not going to do what you're supposed to do. All right, don't worry about it. I'm just going to replace you. And that's what we see here with these men that procrastinated and made up excuses. Another thing we see in this text, verse 24, where it said, for I say unto you, now this is God talking. He says that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. In other words, they wouldn't get another opportunity, you know, and that's the thing. We don't want to miss out on what we were meant to do. He, he said, listen, that's it. They, they, I'm not, I'm not bidding them to come again. They missed out on their opportunity. And I am saying to you today, don't think that you can keep putting off what it is that you were meant to do and think that God can't raise up somebody else to do that work or to go forward and touch those lives that needed to be touched through your life. And listen, I'm not getting at you guys as if I never struggled with this because I most certainly dealt with procrastination. I most certainly was one of those individuals like, you know, um, you know, yeah, I'll start tomorrow or, you know, you know, next week will probably be a good time, you know, or Monday. I mean, think about it um, when it comes to so many different things in our lives that's the type of stuff that we do. You know what I mean? Like it could be dealing with weight loss or exercise and it could be so many different things. Like, let's say if, if it's Friday, we'll say, oh, you know what? 
it's best to start fresh on Monday. So let me eat all I can this weekend and then I'll start on Monday. And what happens is, is all that stuff that we ate over the weekend, you know, and, and that we were supposed to get away from and start afresh on Monday, that those things are still lingering. The thoughts of how good that apple pie or whatever it is we ate, you know, they are still lingering. And now it's even harder to start on Monday. So we say, oh, it'll be on Tuesday. And if we're not careful, we'll get back to Friday. We'll say the weekend thing. We'll get to Monday. We'll say the Tuesday thing. And it just becomes a merry-go-round. So that's why we can't find ourselves making excuses about our purpose because we'll look up and it'll be five years later that we have not done the thing that we were meant to do. And I'm telling you, I have went through this. You know, some of the things that you guys are seeing now, this podcast, this was something that I desired and that God had put in me to do a couple years ago. By the grace of God, I was able to start it and walk, you know, forward in it, you know, but guess what? There may be some things that I desire to do that I may have missed out on, you know, that God had put in me to do that I may have missed out on because of procrastination, because of the excuses that I may have made up at that time. And I'm praying that that is not the case. But sometimes I think back to some things that I desired to do, you know, that I knew God put in me that when I look at now, it may not be the season anymore to do it. So listen, we don't want to find ourselves making excuses for the thing that God has already told us that not only did I tell you to do this, not only have I given you this purpose, but the door is open. You just need to twist the knob and walk in the purpose that I have given to you. And another quote that I want to quote, it says, do it now. This was a quote that I saw online, powerful quote. It says, do it now because sometimes later becomes never. And we saw that happen with these individuals in this story. You know, if you know, come now because you may not get another chance to come in the future. You know, and another thing that we hear people say when, it, you know, you know, even in the midst of procrastination, one of the excuses that people use is I don't have enough time. You know, it could be because they have children. It could be because they're working. It could be even sometimes because of your responsibility at your at your local church. You know, I mean, we come up with this this thing. I don't have enough time. But the truth of the matter is, if we really sat down and mapped out our whole entire uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I am positive that we will find pockets in there, whether it's an hour, whether it's 30 minutes where we could have took that time, whether it's on your lunch break, whether it's when you come home and your favorite show comes on and you just want to sit there because you're a little tired and watch your show. Those are pockets where we could have been working on the thing that we were meant to do. The thing that we have to remember that you always hear people quote is everyone gets the same 24 hours every day, you know, and planning. Remember, I talked about planning, planning. When you plan, when you have that to do list, those bullet points, remember planning will also help your time management because if you have everything planned out and you know what the what your day is going to bring how many hours you may work or you know the possibilities then you can plan out which hours or what time you need to get up whether that's early or how late you need need to stay up to get some of those things done because it's not about you know how much you can always get done in one setting it's at least getting done a little at a time because getting <laughs> You know, because getting done a little at a time compared to nothing is a whole lot, you know, and that's the thing that we do. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm not going to have to work as many hours. But guess what? Tomorrow, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Tomorrow, you may work less hours or you may have to deal with the family less, but then something else pops up and you got to run over here and run over there. Before you know it, you've been ripping and running for three hours and now it's like, oh, I'll just do it tomorrow because it's kind of late. You know, all of these excuses. But I'm telling you. The way that God created us to go forward in in our purpose, these are the things that are going to happen. And we have to find a way to go forward in these things in spite of everything that's going on around us. So a lot of times you hear people say, I don't have enough time. But a major thing, a major thing that you see people do, and and this, this is something that I struggle with in the past, you know, on a couple of things that God had put in my heart to do is waiting for the perfect time. 
Man, listen, I don't know how many times I've heard individuals say I cannot go forward and what it is that I was meant to, to, to do until I get this or until I get that, or until the kids go to college, or until the kids go back to school. Like, listen, major, major excuses when it comes to waiting for the perfect time. Listen, newsflash, guys, there is never going to be a perfect time. You have to plan and figure out a way to get it done in the midst of all it is that you are currently doing. Let me read a scripture to you. Ecclesiastics 11, 3 through 4. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. So basically it's saying, listen, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. But verse four, listen what verse four says. It says, he that observeth the wind shall not sow. And he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. That word observe there means to watch. It says, he that watches the wind, he shall not sow. Why? Because he's going by his circumstances. He's waiting on perfect weather. And it says, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. The word regard there means to be concerned with, to think highly of. Sometimes we think too highly of waiting on the perfect time, waiting for everything to be perfect before we go forward and do what we have to do. Listen, we need to stop observing and regarding everything that is going on around us. Listen, the scripture is basically saying those things are going to happen. Whatever is meant to happen is going to happen. Wherever that tree is meant to fall is going to fall. You can't stop that, but you cannot look at those situations and look at that tree falling and the wind blowing and the clouds above head and say, listen, okay, now is not the perfect time. Let me wait for a sunnier day. No, you have to go forward and what it is that God I called you to do right now. Why? Because tomorrow's not promised. Why? Because we see that if God needs to replace you, he surely will. No, we have to go forward because listen, God gave us the purpose that he gave us guys, because it was best for us to fulfill that purpose. It was, it was specifically for us. So God does not desire in having somebody else fulfill that purpose. If he did, he would not have gave it to you. And here's another thing to think about. Here's a super duper key to think about. And if he did not think you were capable of doing it, he would not have given it to you. And I think that is super important to remember because you have some people that think in their mind, that they just don't have what it takes to do what it is that they see, that they just don't have what it takes to walk out the vision that God has given them. And I'm here to tell you, he would not have given that to you if you were not capable of of fulfilling it, guys. But we have to step out. We have to twist the knob. Excuse me. We have to twist the knob of that door and walk through it and allow God to lead us. It's nothing to be scared of because if we commit our works unto him, he says that our thoughts, our plans, our ideas will be established. Why? Because he gave us those plans and ideas. But the thing that we do is we keep trying to figure things out on our own. We we keep trying to figure out shortcuts. We keep thinking about what kind of money I'm going to make from this. So if it doesn't seem that, you know, it's bringing forth the money that it, it, that we thought it would. Now we manipulating, we're scheming, we're doing, you know, we're throwing little monkey wrenches in what the plan that God has given us. And basically that's not trusting him. And once again, purpose is not meant to bring forth money. That's not what your purpose, your, the thing that you were created to do. God didn't give it to you because it was about it making you rich. It was about you doing it, going forward and affecting somebody else's life on this earth. This was something that he gave you that he did not want to see you with when you come back before him, when it's time to stand before him. He don't want to see you still holding on to the thing that he sent you to the earth with to leave here. You know, especially for those of us that are doing ministry and doing the work of God, you know, outside of the business stuff and the natural stuff. I'm talking about especially those of us that God has given us a purpose here on the earth, dealing with his word and his ministry and spreading his word and affecting people's lives spiritually. We most definitely and most certainly 
need to be walking out that purpose. You know, I mean, I'm telling you guys, been there and done that. I am grateful to be where I am now. And believe it or not, I had to challenge myself to get where I am. And what I mean to get where I am, being, you know, consistent in the things that God has called me to do. And I'm going to talk about that next week. I'm, I'm, I'm going to close this pretty soon, but we are going to have a part two to this because I have like a few more things that I want to deal with. Consistency. You know, you hear people talk about, oh, I'm, I, I'm trying to go forth and I got these jealous people, these haters. You know, we love to use that word haters and things of that nature. Like I want to talk about those things next week because those things are also important. The opposition that we face, you know, what does the Bible say about that? opposition. So I I definitely want to talk about those things, but I just want you guys to understand that I had to challenge myself and believe it or not, this week coming up on Monday will be a year that I have done eat up Mondays. And I don't want to get into it because I'm going to talk about it on Monday, but I had to challenge myself to do that, to put out a video every Monday to encourage people. I had never did anything like that before, but by doing that, I'm telling you guys, it did something great for me. And I'm going to talk about it on Monday. So listen, if you guys are on YouTube or if you can remember, set your alarm for 630 Monday morning. I'm just going to talk about just just the uh, the the feeling of accomplishing, just being able to go a year doing something like that. But not only that, the things that I did to challenge myself and how they helped me to break out of a lot of the procrastination and things that I was dealing with when it came to going forward and the things of God. But the last thing I want to talk about before I close, and I think this is a huge one, you know, and some people may not like this one. They, they, you know, they, they might be like, Trev, you was doing all right. But when you brought this up, you know, you, you start in trouble now. But the last thing I want to talk about before I close that causes us to not go forward uh, in the things that we are called to do that God has purpose in our life is laziness. It, it's no other way to say it. Just being lazy, you know, just oh, I just don't feel like doing it. Oh, I'm tired today. Proverbs 13 and 4, the soul of the sluggard desireth. In other words, the soul of the lazy one, he desire, he he wants all these things. Think about how many times we all vision the things, all of these different things that we want. Oh, I want this. I desire that. I would love for my family to live here or I would love, you know, all these things we desire. It says the soul of the sluggard desireth. He, he wants all these things. He or she wants all these things, but it says, and have nothing, even though they desire all that because they're lazy, they have nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. And I'm here to encourage you guys do not allow laziness to be your excuse. Been there and done that. Still tries to come back on me, fight through it to make sure I get the things done that I need to get done. Listen, laziness can be one of the greatest hindrances, guys, when it comes to going forward in our purpose. And we'll and we'll 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 make it something else. We'll say that it's something else, but sometimes it's just nah, you you being lazy. You know what I mean? You yes, you I get it. You came home from work, you worked 10 hours, eight hours, 12 hours, whatever it is, but I heard a wise man once said that your true job does not start until after the job that you work here on the earth. And what he meant by your true job is your purpose. Listen, if you have a nine to five, then at 501, that's when your purpose starts. That's when you have to be working on that. In spite of whatever, all the other things you have to do after you finish working that job, you have to figure out a way to work on your purpose. That's just how it is. Everybody has the same 24 hours. You know, um, we can find many people that work jobs, that work multiple jobs and still was able to find a way to fulfill the purpose that they were meant to fulfill. So listen, God, he left it to where there's no excuses for us. Any excuse we could come up with, whether it's children, whether it's a job, whether it's a uh, family, whether... He, there's somebody on this earth that God can show you that, listen, they did it. And matter of fact, their schedule was worse than yours. There's somebody you can go on YouTube and listen to their story and be like, man, how did you get all that done? And you was dealing with all of that. No, there's no excuse. 
God made it to where there is no excuses. And we see it even in the Bible where times where different prophets and different men of God was like, oh, I can't do this. And God says, listen, there's others that have done that. There's others that's doing that now. That happened with Elijah. It's like, no, no excuses. You have to get this thing done. And I'm here to tell you guys, there's no excuses. You know, I love you. You know, somebody loved me enough to tell me, Trev, there's no excuses. And that's why when I wasn't going forward in the things that God called me to go forward, and I'm still, there's still some other things that I'm working on to go forward and that I should have started a while back. But one thing that I did not do, I did not go before God. I didn't blame God. Um, you know, I might've made excuses, but I didn't blame them on God. I understood even in the midst of me making those excuses within me, I knew that Trev, you, you the problem though, Trev, you, yeah, it's you, Trev, you the problem. You got to figure it out, my brother. Like you, you, you have to figure out how to go forward in the thing that God called you to do because it's already there. He, he's already given you everything you need to do the job that he's called you to do. And by his grace, I was able to do that. But nobody could not do that for me. Nobody couldn't hold my hand to help me do that. Even no matter how many videos I watch to encourage me, no matter how many motivational videos I watch, all of those things, it did not matter. Not saying that those things didn't encourage me and put a little fire under me. But at the end of the day, I still had to do it. I still had to walk it out. And that's what I am telling you guys today that, listen, you can desire all you want. You can want all you want. You can vision all you want. But if you are being lazy and not going forward and what it is that you are called to do, then you're just going to have nothing. But like the scripture says, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. And when you are diligent in what it is that God has called you to do, there's, there's so many ways that your soul is made fat. Just the joy that I have in doing the work for the Lord that I have, like nothing can compare to that. The opportunity to just chop it up with the people of God, to chop it up with certain individuals on different, that is such a joy to me. That is such a blessing because this is something that 25 years ago, 20 years ago, when I was ripping and running and hanging, you could not have told me because I didn't know that this was something that God had planned for me. But when I, when, when I finally came into the understanding that this is what was in me, this is what was intended for me to do. Then I had to figure out how do I walk in this? God is already, the door is open. How do I twist that knob? How do I gain the strength? How do I get my focus to twist that knob and walk through it and just pretty much follow the dots that God has laid? Just pretty much follow his lead, you know, and by the, by his grace, you know, I was able to do that. So guys, Know that I love you. We're going to really dig in some more next week. Please come back because we're going to talk about some of those things that I told you guys about the haters. You know, that's the word we use today for the envious and the jealous, the haters. We're going to dig into that a little bit more deeper than sometimes we dig into it. Opposition, consistency, all of these different things that become struggles and excuses and things of that nature when it comes to our purpose. We're going to really dig into those next week, but I appreciate you guys being here with me. And once again, do not allow your purpose to be driven by money. Do not make money your reward to, to fulfilling your purpose. No, know that your purpose is meant to be a blessing to somebody else. That's what it is originally meant for. God gave it to you to be a blessing to somebody else. It wasn't for you to be rich and get rich and be scheming, none of that. But if those things come, if wealth comes and those doors open, that's the cherry on top. There's nothing wrong with that in itself. The Bible doesn't say that money is the root of all evil. It says the love of it. But when we're not focused on it, I truly believe God is going to take care of us. And if it's meant for you to have a little bit more more than somebody else, then so be it. That's a cherry on top. But don't allow your purpose to be driven by that. Because if you allow your purpose to be driven by that, as soon as you don't see what you vision, when it came to finance, you are going to manipulate. Whether that's in the church, if you're a preacher, you're going to manipulate the people. Whether if that's in business, you're going to get over on your customers. Why? Because you did not go into it with the right mindset. But listen, guys, know that I love you. Please don't forget to leave a review for us on iTunes, uh, a rating on iTunes. Listen, let me know your thoughts and your comments on the YouTube channel. All of you guys that's been commenting on YouTube, love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Glad that this podcast has been encouraging you. Until the next time we get together, guys, I love you. This was awesome. I can't wait.
Shalom.